Network Engineer, a CTO at Telic Technologies. Welcome, Junior. Uh, Good morning, everyone. I will be speaking in Portuguese, but at some times I will also be saying something in Spanish because my Spanish is not that good. So I will now speak about VXLAN and the way in which we in Brazil and precisely in Latin America are using this protocol for Metro Ethernet and how we do network analysis in a more resilient way. So let me tell you something about Telic. This is a Brazilian company. We specialize in network engineering in servers, etc., but not much more than that. This is our agenda. Now, first of all, this is the outline of my presentation. First of all, what is VXLAN, how it works, the network model with VXLAN and VXLAN versus MPLS. Many people compare these two technologies. VXLAN in Metro Ethernet networks, how to replace this, and pure layer two for VXLAN. EVPN a case study, which I will explain on VXLAN. And for VXLAN for SD1 and mitigation of DDoS attacks. Now, first of all, the motivation. With the increase of the need for transport in layer two and the decrease of the commercial use of the EPNs in layer three, in Brazil mainly, it be commercially, there are not so many clients who purchase network interconnections in layer three. And this has now been replaced by VXLAN over time. Now, as a result of this migration in the market, it became necessary to create a new option for the new network models. Now, considering the lack of knowledge on VXLAN, I decided to make this presentation here. So what is VXLAN? VXLAN is a network protocol that does encapsulation of the entire packets in layer three within a UDP packet. And this is then transported within a layer three network. What in the past was done through tunneling in MPLS and we had MPLS labels, this is no longer required. Today, with tunneling in layer two, we can have a layer three network, VXLAN. VXLAN is responsible for encapsulation of this and of transport within the network. VXLAN was created originally to be used in data centers, basically for interconnecting and transporting several servers with different types of storages and in different localities. And this is in those places where this is not available. MPLS had been considered for telecoms. So if there was not a, when there was not a protocol for this, that is why VXLAN arose. A clear example of how VXLAN was created for data centers is the virtualization that we can see with hypervisors such as VMware and Hyper-V support VXLAN by default, do so natively. So this 
is now much clear and it is used in data centers. So this works very well as access networks. Here we have virtual extensible LAN. And this is what VXLAN means, virtual extensible LAN. Now, how does VXLAN work? Let's see. It encapsulates all the Ethernet frames in layer two. All these frames are encapsulated in UDP packets. Each tunnel has an identifier called VNI, which is the VXLAN network identifier. VNI is similar very similar to a simple VLAN on an overlay network. VTEP is a VLAN tunnel endpoint, is the one that receives and delivers the layer two tunnels. All devices that receive, all end devices that receive tunnels in layer two within the mesh, in layer two are called VTEP. Another point that might not be so interesting because it is, could be negative but can also be used very well is that VTEP, all the VLAN tunnel endpoints, the VTEPs, also work as point multipoint. So this can be used for connecting point A, point B, and point C, where three points can communicate with one another. This is very similar to the VPLS of the MPLS. All the VTEPs also learn the MAC address in the port of the delivered tunnels. And this is very similar, once again, to the VPLS of the MPLS. So basically, this is based on flood and learning. So the VXLAN model is as follows. We see the overlay network that is created here on an underlay network, which is already ready, which has already been routed. We can have everything here. And we create new networks on an already existing network that is ready. VXLAN in Metro Ethernet networks. With the development of the OSs and, device, and network devices, several vendors and developers started to incorporate the VXLAN in the code and adding this feature. So these are already existing features in the devices in production. At present, VXLAN is already supported by the majority of the switch vendors and the route vendors, router vendors. For example, Huawei, Cisco, Juniper, Arista, HP, Microtik, only in version 7, already support this. These are router and switches brands that, as I said, already support this. They already support VXLAN. There are some systems, some OSs, such as Ocnus and Sonic OS and Cumulus and FRR. These also support tunneling and it is not necessary, uh, well, of course, using Ocnos, Sonic OS or Cumulus, you have to have a switch in order to install all the operating systems. But if you have a server and want to establish VXLAN servers through that server, this is something very simple to do so with FRR. For those of you who are not familiar with this, FRR is a software, it's a router, it's a daemon that you install in your Linux server and then becomes a router with advanced BGP functions, etc. Now, Hyper-V and VMWave, these all support this. Datacom does not provide support yet. Those who don't know about Datacom, this is a switch vendor 
and uh, a Brazilian switch and router vendor. This is something that is used a lot in Brazil. However, it is totally focused on VPLS-based switches and routers, but not for VXLANs. But they do have a range of products and could offer VXLAN with another chip because what is used at present doesn't offer support yet. Here we have a comparison of VXLAN and MPLS. And this is probably the most interesting part of the talk. We have here um, vendors and you have a remote bot. And particularly in Latin America, where the devices with MPLS end up being more expensive. In Latin America, you have devices that support VXLAN, especially in the region in Latin America and in Mexico, for example, they might be cheaper. I, I think they might be prob might be cheaper. For example, the brand Aristas all provides support for native VXLAN, and you can set up a net ring in your network in order to do the entire authentication of the clients in one single device. So. When we compare the two protocols, we see that this is somehow unfair because one does not replace the other. We can compare these parallel in parallel because both can establish layer two tunnels on a layer three network, VXLAN and MPLS. Both, well, VXLAN only allows a layer three network. In the case of MPLS, you can have four, two, and three. VXLAN depends only on a layer three network, where a VTAP can reach another VTAP. Now, what does this imply? If you have a point where on one end you have a switch that does VXLAN, and the other end you have a switch that also does VXLAN in the middle between one and the other. The device in the middle does not need to have VXLAN, but this should be reachable using OSPF or ISIS. For instance, you can use a microtaker in in the middle or Huawei or Cisco that do not support VXLAM but do not need that support. They, what it needs to support is just what is in the two ends. And in MPLS, MP, in MPLS all the machines in the network that uh, talk um, in MPLS should be able to speak MPLS uh, to deliver everything from one side to the other. The, you don't need the protocol if a loopback finds another loopback, that's enough. So while in MPLS it is also necessary to have LDP or RSVP to be able to establish tunnels between them. So um, that, uh, so uh, thanks to that, XLAN uh, uses uh, less resources of uh, the machines that you're going to use because there's no need to load them with uh, MPLS uh, tags. You just, it's just a, a layer three uh, routing. And here, the XLAN works perfectly well in networks um, that have MTU of up to 1500. And uh, it's, uh, there's a minimum that uh, of uh, 1526 MTU to be able to establish the MPLS tunnels because you have to count the overhead. Uh, a problem that we have in Brazil is uh, the is uh, balancing between aggregated uh, uh, interfaces from uh, uh, depending on the chip or the switch that is used for MPLS. 
it uh, it may be more difficult and some Huawei's are like that and Juniper are also like this so there there's no perfect uh, balancing between interfaces because the label will only go through an interface on that side that will end up uh, circulating as a single uh, interface if you use xlan then that can balance traffic uh, perfectly between the backbone uh, sites even if they are aggregated another thing is that there are no possibilities of uh, traffic engineering um, um, inherent to the protocol and especially using RSVPTE, but in VXLAN that is not possible unless you use another protocol for that. But VXLAN will uh, follow the metric, the same metric of L uh, LPD. If you use uh, and you can't send it through another route of the network as you can do with other MPLS routers. And here, as I said earlier, we d you don't need to have uh, XLAN in the in the core of the network. You don't need a VXLAN. It um, you can route the network in layer three, and in the meantime, well. While the MPLS needs the labels in uh, in all the core, the EVPN, Ethernet VPN. Here I won't dwell on this, although it's such an interesting thing for VXLAN. But EVPN is uh, the uh, plane control solution to distribute information of layers two and three between the VT. EPs in a network overlay and it's not mandatory to do layer two tunnels it reduces the flooding so if we are going to have a multicast network or multicast tunnels it is possible to think of a multicast network without the need for VPN because there would be flooding and uh, you wouldn't be able to do it with with all the network um, we can compare it grossly between the um, all the the different uh, tunnel tunnels, uh, the underlay and the overlays. The underlays are the networks with the routing protocols that make it possible to have redundant uh, paths to destination. While overlay is over the other network, it's created over an existing network. And uh, we, we can talk a lot about that. Uh, speaking of VPN, for instance, in Brazil, one of the problems that we have, they want to solve it with VPN to reduce the, um, one of the problems. So case study, as I told you, IX Metro. Um, this morning, we already talked about this. Um, and uh, here there are services in the data center and VPS infrastructure, uh, IAS uh, collocation, IP transit, and end-to-end uh, -to -end, uh, circuits. Here, a bit uh, of uh, the IX Metro network in Brazil, Chile, the United States. Africa and uh, Europe too. Uh, I think she uh, for what are the challenges? It would be well. There are five countries in two continents, and the idea was to connect them. We needed to connect three data centers in Santiago, and uh, linking all the ser servers and storages and transport um, tr IP transit circuits, and also do remote peering in other countries. And another idea was uh, to deliver end-to-end uh, -end circuits um, within the same country. Why did we uh, choose uh, VXLAN? Well, among the many reasons, 
Uh, first of all, because there are because of the vendors available in the Chilean market in Chile, it is not so common to find uh, Huawei or vendors, and uh, so um, these were machines that were already being used um, in the infrastructure. The client was already using the machines, and it was a good uh, machine for inter operability to, to speak with other vendors because of cost and the people were already familiar with the topic. This is the configuration of Arista, how you do the uh, configuration of VXLAN and Arista. And here we see that we have the blowback uh, interface. and. Uh, here we have here we have the normal and here the interface and so here you see the VLAN the interface the source that uh, the packets uh, will leave the machine and y también el VTEP. But so here we have the tunnel, the layer two that is established. As you can see, it's very simple. You don't have any very advanced uh, uh, configuration. It's just that. And here, a bit of troubleshooting. Here we have all the Macs learned uh, from a VTE app, and here we have all the Macs learned in a VNI. That is, we, here we have the Mac of the two routers that we have connected to the uh, interface. As I was saying, the balancing in the aggregated interfaces. Here we have uh, two interfaces of 100 gigas, gig, and in total, 127 uh, gigas, and an interface of 64 gigas, and the other one is 63. There's so there's a perfect balance for the uh, 100 gigas there. So that is an the. And uh, you wouldn't uh, get that if you had other equipment and if you were using uh, DLB. Then after one year, what were the results? The uh, network is robust and resilient. We didn't have any problems uh, in the implementation or afterwards. Uh, we didn't have any problems with the fibers. It is scalable. It is very easy to put a switch and to increase the network. The low, the uh, operations cost is low. It's very inexpensive. It, the interoperability is uh, great, and uh, we have uh, um, two TBs, two terabytes uh, per second of aggregated. Uh, uh, traffic with no problems whatsoever. And here, let me tell you a bit more about VXLAN. So VXLAN is basically an uh, encapsulation of uh, Ethernet frames. Why shouldn't we use it for the Internet? We can establish inter uh, uh, tunnels through the Internet. It's enough for an IP to be reachable, and you can uh, establish a tunnel and to have some VLANs go through those tunnels. It's very simple. So the possibility of using um, using uh, encryptions uh, such as IPsec and some uh, SD1 vendors already prefer uh, VXLAN uh, tunnels instead uh, of uh, GRE or L2TP instead of uh, 
uh, you can use them uh, instead of a GRE turners for mitigation of DDoS. We, there are cases of uh, DDoS attacks that we already use XLAN instead of using GRE tunnels. So it's easier, it's more inexpensive, and you don't use need any adjustments of TPS. So thank you. There is my contact information. If you have any questions, please contact me there. Salon. Any questions in the room? Well, there's a remote question. Guillermo will read it. Yes, we do have a question in Portuguese. Manuel Teixeira, who says, well, I don't know whether it's a question or a comment. He says, in the case of Microtech, can you use it in combination with MPS to speed up the routing of the packets sent by the XLAN in a network because Microtech doesn't support uh, the routing of segments. Well, they're, they're not compatible between a VXLAN and uh, so uh, you, these are different protocols and they're not uh, compatible. Now, what you can do is to use tunnels of VXLAN to if there are no other ways of doing that. All right, there are no more questions. So thank you, Junior. We now 